was very intrigued. You started your Dharma talk with, I'm neither a good or a bad man. I've killed people. I know 100%. And my question is kind of two parts, but the same, which is, if I have an intention to deconstruct or break up who I thought I was, and I wake up with, you're a bad person, you've done some, you've hurt a lot of people, mm -hmm. and it's already there, so I wake up with this in the morning, let's just say, and my intention is I'm gonna sit and connect with my breath, mm -hmm. but I'm still feeling like you're a crappy person. Th just, this is more than 10 words. Sorry. Um, how do I accept, how, how, can you say anything more about that in a practical way? to be with that and also yeah, have the, your intention? The process, the, first I had to want to accept that this is like this because that was like that. Because of my conditioning, the karma that I inherited, that was the karma that I created. Now, that this is like this, what am I going to do with it? Right? And, and the moment I think I know that I'm supposed to do this, that, or the next thing with it, I'm already in trouble. So the point for me was, I went through years of therapy. Um, I worked with an MD psychiatrist. I worked with a licensed social worker. I was in individual therapy. I was in group therapies. And, and they were very helpful for me. But, but they, they, all fall, they fall short. They're not in and of themselves enough. They provided me with a lot, of a lot of interesting information and some useful strategies. But, but how, to how to apply those strategies on a consistent basis is the very foundation of a disciplined spiritual practice. I sit, every, I sit whether I want to sit or not. I stay committed to the disciplines that I have around me because they provide me a container. When that suffering experiences, they provide me a container to hold that. So by not, not rejecting it, nor allowing it to identify me or control me, right in that space, transformation and healing begin to take place. So I don't heal. Healing takes place as a result of this discipline practice. And healing is not the absence of suffering. It's learning to live in a new and conscious relationship with that suffering so that it stops running my life in the ways in which it did. That's what I've experienced or been told or witnessed. Hmm? Yeah. Last question. Oh, last two questions. Go ahead. What do you think? I, I, I don't know, but I haven't meditated as long as you have, and I don't feel this way, but I have no desire to give up everything that I've ever thought was true. Did, did I say give up everything? Or throw out or reject it. I thought you said something like that. You said something like, if you don't have a burning desire to, to wake up. If you don't have a burning desire to wake up. See, careful what you think. I'm glad that you checked. But this is often the case. People will ask me, they'll say, Anshan, are you enlightened? I go, well, what do you think? And some people will say, no, no, I don't think so. And I go, well, then I'm not. Some people will say, I knew the minute I met you were enlightened. So I guess I am. It, it doesn't really matter. I mean, we, we, the way we view the world is shaped by the conditioning that we've inherited. The point of practice is to wake up to that. If our, if our, if our focus isn't about waking up, then we're really wasting our time. Last question. 
I don't even think about happiness. It's, it's unimportant. I mean, what is happiness? I don't have a bad answer for that question, but I believe happiness is a real thing. I've, I've reached a place where I understand that all things that come into existence will pass away. The impermanent, the reality of life is impermanent and selfless. It's the pursuit of what I call happiness that simply creates more suffering. I have a, a life today that is, that is very interesting because I find myself today as being part of a solution, not part of a problem. But I don't chase after, I, I don't chase after happiness, or I don't really worry about it too much. I don't, I don't grasp onto sadness or reject sadness. Um, it's just, I have a full range of feelings that come into existence and pass away. And, and I don't, I make, I'm very cautious not to grab onto or want to recreate any one of them. So for me, happiness is n not the point. I've also, I mean, I've heard, <laughs> I haven't heard it in a while. This is close to it, though. There was a time when people would say, uh, I'd, I'd come questions and responses, and of course someone would s not ask a question but make a statement. They'd go, man, what's up with you Buddhists, man? You're depressing. He said, all you talk about is suffering. Now, I don't want to suffer. I want to be happy. And I go, that's suffering. Because we're defining what happiness is. And then we're trying to get that. But in the process of defining what happiness is and chasing after that, I may miss the reality of happiness when it actually surfaces because it doesn't look like what I think it ought to look like. So I just give up. I surrender. And I just concentrate on practice and be present for whatever it is that I experience. But I'm really happy that you asked the question. <laughs> but it's time to bring this evening to a close. Um, I want to do this in a, in, a, in a regular way for me. I have to get up real careful. A couple of I don't want to fall off. And, oh. first thing I do is I restore the cushion. And prepare for the next person who will sit there. The next person who sits there will be Buddha. In the tradition I'm ordained, we bow. We do this a lot. But it's a very specific practice. We're taught to press our palms together with our thumb tips touching and allowing their thumbs to rest against our first knuckle. Our fingers are together, not spread together. Tip of our longest finger is parallel with the tip of our nose. We're not too rigid or too casual. You know, like, gee, what's happening? But we're precise. We bow at the waist, nothing else moves. This is a, and a critical practice. This is like the bell ringing. It helps to keep me, it, it helps remind me when I'm distracted, when my mind's taking me places where I think my mind's not taking me. The name of the position in, in Japanese is gasho. G-A-S-S-H-O. In gasho, I bow to Kenshin for creating the framework that's held us together with the song of this bell. A very critical and important and powerful practice. Um, for Tara, I didn't get your first name. For Tara, for Janet, for the camera guy. Oh yeah, the light guy back here. What's your name? Glenn. Glenn. And for Steve Zapala. For um, 
extending the invitation for me to come and meet all of you. I place my hands in gusho and I bow to you in gratitude. To the Unitarian Church who provides us for this space, right on. Yeah. And to all of you, Buddhas to be, I bow to you in gratitude. And as a reminder, really, if there's anything I can ever do to support you along this path, please do not hesitate to ask me or hesitate and ask me anyway. 